Hello world, it's Birdo Prey 5 Kapla, and welcome to my review of Star Trek Picard Season 2 trailer that was dropped on Star Trek Day, September 8th, 2021. Uh, let's just get into it. Uh, the trailer starts with a view of what appears to be Los Angeles and... Uh, Picard is saying to heal our future we have to return to the past and we've got quick shots of Rafi we got a quick shot of Q uh, I think we had seven in there I'm not sure uh, we'll keep going anyway new season starts February 2022 so what are we at September October, November, December, January, February, five months, five months away from Star Trek Picard. We've got a, a month of new lower decks. And then I don't know if Discovery is going to start up right after lower decks, but that would be about right. I don't know if we're going to be in constant Trek or it could be um, it could be Prodigy. It could be Lower Decks, Prodigy. I'm not 100% sure. But I suspect we will have near constant Trek coverage until Star Trek Picard. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Paramount Plus Original. And we have a, a woman's voice who's saying she first saw Picard as a man who chose the stars. But after all this time, she's come to wonder, has he been seeking or running? I don't really know what any of that means. We get another view of Chateau Picard. And now Q is asking, do you recall what I said, Jean-Luc, when last we met, when last we parted ways? The trial never ends. And... Uh, Picard is like, Q, I'm way too old for this bullshit. But before he can say the shit out of bullshit, Q snaps his finger. And I really hope he says something like Jean-Luc. Those words are unbecoming a man as distinguished as you. And he snaps his finger and reverts Patrick Stewart's uh, words back to the ones he would have used on TNG. But I think we all know that's the one thing Q is not going to do. He's too old for his bullshit. So now Los Angeles appears under attack. Uh, Rios is saying there's a problem. Something moved them. Uh, now Patrick Stewart is saying Q... He's just telling us. He's telling us outright. We don't have to we don't have to put this together for ourselves. Q went back in time and turned our old world into a totalitarian nightmare. So Q himself on purpose seemingly went back in time and changed history so that the current universe appears to look a lot more like the mirror universe. Although they're not calling it the mirror universe. And this is apparently the actual, uh, you know, main timeline. And Jerry Ryan, a.k.a. Seven of Nine, says, do you know what this means? Time has been broken. No, because this happens all the fucking time in Star Trek is that somebody goes back and changes something and they're sweeping changes for the future. It's happened as far back as the original series in the Guardian of Forever episode where saving the life of one uh, Edith Wheeler changed history. In fact, the Germans won World War II and very possibly could have had a future very similar to this. Uh, that was that was all that needed to happen. It didn't break time. Time continued just fine. It was just a different timeline. And hell, uh, I mean, 
all the way through Voyager, where Janeway herself went back in time to get Voyager home 20 years earlier. Did she break time? No, time continues just fine. Whoever the last one to change time, time just continues. This notion that you can break time is relatively new and frankly preposterous. So, um, Captain, Captain, uh, Captain, Kirk. Captain Picard or Admiral Picard or whatever he is saying he will get us all home together. The only way to heal, heal their, uh, heal their time is to go back and repair the past. So they have to go. Meanwhile, he's touching a painting that appears to be him as, I guess, I don't know, like Supreme Commander or something. So time's been good to him. His family is still a top federation or whatever, uh, you know, empire family. So they got to go back into the past. So how are they going to go back into the past? Well, I mean, they could just go around the sun. They've been doing that since the original series days. They did it in Star Trek Four. It seemed to work pretty effing well. You know, not a hell of a lot of risk to go along with it. Slingshot around the sun, you're in time war. Uh, you would certainly think they've perfected it. Or, I mean, hell, uh, in, the, uh, in DS9, there were at least two new ways to go back in time. Using chronoton particles. D and in in, um, in uh, past tense, they were able to uh, beam people back through time. It's there's a lot of ways to travel through time. Hell, they could go to Bajor and just ask to borrow the orb of time and say, "Hey, uh, hey, Bajor, hey, Major Kira." if that is your title, uh, I'm sorry. We really need to borrow this uh, or else, you know, the entire Federation, the entire galaxy is gonna be fucked. Can we please borrow your orb of time and just the prophets can send them back in time? I'm sure Captain Sisko, who is now a prophet, would go ahead and help, uh, you know, Patrick Stewart, a.k.a. Uh, Captain Picard, uh, to go back and repair the history of Earth. But are they going to do that? No, no, no. What are they going to do to go back in time? They're going to go to the Borg. Oh, my God. Why would you use the Borg to travel through time for fuck's sake. There are so many other ways to travel in time rather than setting up a Borg queen just so you can, what, use a Borg sphere and go back in time like you did in First Contact? Uh, it hurts. So that's why we have the Borg. Oh, and there's Dr. Girardi, who, guess what, still not in prison for murdering Bruce Maddox. I guess she got off with, I don't know why. Why, why, why does she not go to prison? I mean, she, she was, she wasn't under the influence of anything. She made the decision to murder a man. Now, granted, she thought maybe, I don't know actually what she thought. There was really no reason to ever murder Bruce Maddox. Because um, a Romulan told her that he'd be better off dead. It really doesn't make sense how Dr. Girardi is walking free. But, you know, female, female privilege in the Trek universe. This February... 
Welcome to the earth of the 21st century. Seems to be pre-COVID. I don't see masks. They can undo this nightmare. And now Rafi is yelling at Seven. And don't forget, Rafi and Seven are now romantically involved. They're a couple. They're not just friends. So Rafi is yelling at Seven and says, you can drive a starship, but you can't drive a car? Well, what about that's equivalent? That's like saying you can drive a car, but you can't drive a submarine? Yeah, yeah, they're co fucking completely two different things. Okay, I can drive a Jeep. I can't drive a fucking submarine. I wouldn't expect to. But you know what? I guess if you yell at her enough, she figures it out because that's how writing works. And, oh, and Gerardi is saying, you guys really need to work on your communication skills. And they both yell at her at the same time. And she says, see this, now you're in sync. So for some reason, even though it's a time travel story, even though it is a time travel story, they've got three days, three days in which to right the wrong. So did they purposely go three days ahead of whatever changes? Did they not know when they were going back? Or why can't they just go back in time again if they fuck up? Or is this Q giving them a three-day window? I don't know. But like all time travel stories, when the one thing you should have is unlimited amount of time, they have a three-day window. Before the future is changed forever. Even in the darkest of circumstances, there's a light. If you say so. Rios asks, where are you taking us? And Picard says, home. Okay. Listen, I'll be honest. Is it, is it marginally... Does it look marginally entertaining? Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it, kinda. Uh, I, I'll watch it. I will certainly watch Picard season two with more enthusiasm than Prodigy season one, because oh my God, that that looks truly, truly awful. Now, is this going to ruin the queue? for me it might uh is this gonna ruin uh picard for me probably no worse than has already happened do they seem to address the fact that he is no longer human but an android not in the slightest not in the slightest do what do i honestly think i mean i honestly think they're gonna go back in time and like I don't know what they're going to do, but we all know what they're basically want to go back in time and change the 2016 election. However, they're going to to do it. That's that's their goal here is to go back in time and change the results of the 2016 election. Uh, that that's clearly the plot, uh, how they how they go around doing it differently. So it's not so obvious. We'll see. But uh, I know that's what they intended this to be. And we'll see. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll watch and I'll report and you guys can make up your own mind. Um, seems like there'll be plenty of cursing again. Unfortunately. Um, plenty of killing. Uh, will there be as many murders as in season one? I'm guessing there won't be because, well, they hopefully won't uh, vacuum 
hundred thousand Borg into space again, or ten thousand, whatever it was, uh, Borg. But uh, sixty-five actual character deaths, if I recall. Um, that's that's probably about even. What'd you say, Mo? Oh, eighty-eight. Was it eighty-eight? It might have been. I might I might be going low. Yeah, probably. In fact, there were two I missed, so I think it would have been 90 um, on my official death count. So I, I, I'm going to say it's going to be less, less deaths than first season. Uh, that I'll be pretty confident of. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we'll see. We're less than five months, maybe five months away from the uh, premiere of Star Trek Picard Season 2. Uh, in the meantime, check out Star Trek Lower Deck reviews I'm doing each week on Thursdays. Kapla all, bird out.